Alice Bellringer today. Good morning. Good morning and welcome. Welcome to May, the month of May. I don't know where time has gone, but it certainly is a beautiful day here on, on May 2nd here at Sherwood Episcopal Church. And I welcome the congregation here present, and I welcome those who are viewing us uh, through the, the airwaves. So welcome. Just a few announcements, as is our tradition uh, before we begin the service. Um, looking for some members to be a part of a green team, a small group that has perhaps a green thumb or a desire to help beautify actually the entire Sherwood Hill. And we are going to be collaborating um, with uh, uh, Faith Lutheran and Basil, Basil A&E. And so we will be working together. And so I'm hoping that some of you will come forward and help us with that. And also, this is the last day, um, or the last day for the magazine drop-off for our seafarers. One of our outreach mi uh, ministries is May 6th and the box is outside of the parish office. And I know we have some magazines already, and I really encourage you, if you have magazines in good condition, to donate them so that those who come off the ships, and actually they can't come off and be on dry land because of COVID, they at least can have something new in their hands to stimulate them and sort of catch them up on what is going on in the world. And also we have next Saturday, we are going to or Kimberly's Flowers. She is a beautiful flower grower and has a flower farm just north of us. And she um, has fresh cut flowers for those who belong to her group. And, um, and you can join that group. But she knows because of this year and the good weather that we've had, she's going to have an overload of tulips. So next Saturday, between the hours of uh, 10 and 12, she will have fresh cut tulips in bunches at $20 a piece. And they um, would be perfect gifts for the female woman, mother, friend in your life that you may want to honor on Mother's Day the following day. So if you are interested, please come by and pick out your fresh cut tulips and you can give them to your mother or special friend on Sunday for Mother's Day. And lastly, there's a wonderful program run through the National Church and that is called EFN, Education for Ministry. Stephanie Everts has been a part of this program. It's a year long program, actually four years but it's a deep dive into the Old Testament, the New Testament, the tradition and scripture of the Episcopal Church, and, and more on. And it's a wonderful, wonderful opportunity to deepen your faith with a large group of people um, who are seeking the same thing. And it will be done, I believe, by Zoom. But information is in your bulletin. And for those who are interested, please look into that. And I think that is it for now. So we're going to have a few moments of silence before I'll invite you all to stand and as we process um, with the cross. I'm so glad you're here with us today.
Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. life. Grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his footsteps in the way that leads to eternal life through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading. The first reading is from Acts. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home, seated his chariot. He was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join us. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you were reading? He replied, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silent before his shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied. Who could describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, About whom may I ask you, does the prophet say this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with the scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to a water. And the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from going, being baptized? 
he commanded the chariot to stop. And both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down to the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself in Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 5, verses 12 to 2 and 20, 21. The psalm we pointed today is to be read responsibly, like whole verse. My praise is to him, the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the preference of those who worship him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall bow before him. For kingship belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. To him alone, all who sleep in the earth bow down and worship. All who go down to the dust shall fall before him. My soul shall live in him. My descendants shall serve him. They shall be known as the Lord's forever. They shall come and make known to the people yet unborn, the saving these that he has done. <laughs> of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to, to you, Lord Christ. Lord Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Excuse me, the wrong one. <laughs> Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself, unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in there bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become his disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the one true vine grower, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. Please be seated. Today's scripture readings are intertwined like a grove, grove of grapevines in a way that I didn't quite realize when I sat down with my readings on Monday. 
You have two separate stories from two different time periods. The Gospel reading today from John is placed after Jesus has come triumphantly into Jerusalem for his last time. He has broken bread with his disciples. He has washed their feet and given them the new covenant to love one another just as he loves them. Clearly, he is continuing with his teachings to his disciples who still seem to be scratching their heads and wondering who this guy is who speaks of his death and promises his return. And so he launches into a teaching moment to describe who he is and whose he is and how his fishermen friends are all connected to him who is one with God. Throughout his description of his father being the vine grower, he the vine, and we the branches, he uses one word repeatedly, abide. The Greek word for abide is meno, and Greek descriptors that may give us a fuller sense of the importance of this word, so I want to switch out abide. In me, Instead of saying, abide in me, how about remain in me, or stay in me, or live in me, dwell in me, and endure in me? This may give you a fuller understanding of what Jesus was trying to infuse on the hearts of his disciples and our hearts as well. Jesus is referring to an ongoing connection with him, not something that can be broken when it is convenient. Although we as humans tend to break from the vine, therefore from God, when we get distracted into believing we can live a full and loving life without the guidance of Christ's abiding love. Remember, throughout the gospel, Jesus reminds us that he will remain in us, engaging with us, meeting us where we are, just as the vine connects with its branches. We, the branches, we are the ones who become weak or brittle or stripped and therefore snap, literally snap away from the giving life of Jesus' life. But how is this story from John related to the story of the book of Acts? As you may know, the book of Acts is considered the gospel or the sequel to the gospels, in particular, the gospel of Luke. It certainly captures the stories of the very early church, where the disciples as students become the apostles as messengers of the good news of Jesus Christ. Now, I love this story from the books of Acts because it is rich with descriptions and it is a beautiful story of what Jesus was trying to instill in his 12 disciples before he was crucified. It is so appropriate that we read from the book of Acts a book about resurrection and radical transformation throughout this season of Easter. Now, early on in Acts, actually uh, chapter 1, verse 8, Jesus proclaims that his disciples will receive a power, the power of the Holy Spirit, so that they can become witnesses after his death. And Philip, who was one of the 12 apostles, experienced just that in today's reading when he heard and, more importantly, responded to what He was hearing, get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem towards Gaza. And it is defined as the wilderness road. In other words, he wasn't necessarily called to stay in his familiar territory of Jerusalem. The Holy Spirit was beginning to push him beyond his safe boundaries. The Spirit continues to prod Philip who sees an Ethiopian eunuch riding in a chariot. Philip wastes no time, and he finds himself running beside this chariot, 
Just imagine the scene. Philip responding to God's pull and running beside a chariot of a stranger and discovering it to be someone from a foreign region, Ethiopia, well south of Egypt, in a region often referred to at that time as the Sub-Saharan Africa. In other words, residents that certainly would have been considered from the ends of the earth. But the stranger was not only someone from a foreign region. This was a person who was a eunuch, a man who was castrated before puberty. He was neither male nor female. He clearly didn't fit into the Greco-Roman conventional gender definitions of male and female. His lack of masculinity and virility would have rendered him an outcast where strength and power were the markers of an important man. In other words, he didn't fit in. Despite his intellect, curiosity as of a scholar, and his important role within the queen's court, one who possessed enough power to actually have a scroll and read it, and to be riding in a chariot. None of these things would have mattered because he was a eunuch, a social outcast who fit neither conventional gender role. As the seed unfolds, it is not Philip or the unnamed eunuch that was undeniably responsible for what transformed on the wilderness road down from Jerusalem. No, it was the beautiful dance of the Holy Spirit who was alive in both of them, so much so that it off opened their own hearts and filled and filled their hearts with the love of Christ in ways that motivated the eunuch to ask to be baptized at the sight of water. And Philip, to push aside his understanding of who was considered an appropriate child of God and baptize this non-gendered foreigner. The eunuch and Philip were both willing to be pruned a bit, to have their familiar established branches snipped, forcing them to get out of their comfort zone and engage with the other. Two strangers, Philip on fire for Jesus to share the good news, and the eunuch ready and willing to receive it. You couldn't have a better situation. Both had to step out of their fears and the strangeness of the situation, in a way be trimmed of their old ways in order to grow in a new way. The Jesus way that left one a newly baptized believer and both, both receiving a deep joy within their hearts. You know, we have been pruned as a greater church and as a community of faith this past year. And I wonder what we are to learn from our pandemic pruning. It certainly wasn't our choice to be pruned, was it? But it is our choice in how we respond individually and collectively. It can literally mean the rebirth or the death of one's community. I believe we have responded to our pruning, our pruning to change our worship in ways we never imagined a little over a year ago. Maybe some of you are surprised by your own pruning and you now are finding yourself tuning in to Sherwood's worship service that you could you had not done when you literally could have walked through our doors. The pandemic has made us all be clipped a bit, pared down, and to really decode what is important in life, and quite frankly, what is not. Now, your vestry leadership is reflecting and praying about the pruning that has taken place in our own community of faith. And as we began this conversation and discernment, we are asking ourselves questions 
as we rise out, and I believe we are rising out of the pandemic. We're asking ourselves, what do we want to keep as a congregation that we had to take on because of the pandemic? Or what do we want to bring back that we had to let go of because of the pandemic? And lastly, what do we truly want to leave behind that we really don't need anymore, that we had to give up because of that pandemic? There are no easy answers, and it will continue to be a part of our discussion for months to come as we begin to fully comprehend all that has transpired over this last year. But the conversation and the wondering has begun. Some thoughts that rose were things that were tangible. We need to continue or we want to continue to provide our worship service virtually, even when this church is filled to the gills. And we learned that, you know, Zoom really isn't our enemy. And in fact, it can provide an opportunity to share our faith in intimate ways that we never imagined. And we know that engaging together as a community, hospitality, sharing the food and the drink with one another, particularly after our service, is something that we want to bring back and that we will and need to bring back. But the most profound statement that was shared towards the end of our discussion was when a wise vestry member said, I don't want us to ever go back to thinking we can't change because we have proven that we can. What a transformational moment that was as we look towards a future that I guarantee you will continue to change. We as a community proved that the fear of change can be broken and even subtle transformation can begin as we show our resilient nature to ourselves and to the world. These questions that the vestry is spending time with should be your questions, individually or maybe even as a family. What pruning needs to be done in your faith life? Maybe your faith needs a reboot. You have become too complacent and you, and you want to be more intentional in how you live out your faith or you want to come out from behind the computer and the camera and begin to intentionally engage with us as a congregation, bringing your own fruits to Sherwood's table. Or maybe you need to continue just as you are, that the stripping down of your life because of COVID has allowed for the emergence of a life that is more in tune with God than ever before. Or if you were like probably most of us, we're somewhere in between, maybe fluctuating day in and day out in different spaces. Whatever the case might be, take today's scriptures, both of them, and use them as your guide as you slowly emerge from a year like no other and look towards a future with hope and with gratitude. Remember that to truly let ourselves to be led by the Spirit as we discern our future, we must remember the word abide from John's Gospel reading, mentioned eight times in eight short verses. To truly be a part of the vine grower's plan the branches on the living vine, we must abide, we must remain, we must stay and dwell and last and endure in Christ and with Christ as he always, always 
has done for us. Amen. Prayers of the people. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the church may truly humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops and priests and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Be grace to you, do will, and all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. We pay especially for those impacted by COVID-19, as well as those on our prayer, parish prayer list. Sally, Debbie, Shannon, Jeff and Kim, Norma, Margaret, Ed, Laura, Joyce, Christine, Mike and his family, Kendall, Marge, Sarah, Joe, Gail, Steve W, Michelle, Joe G, Jay, Rick, Ella May, Steve, and Debbie, Janetta, Christina, Calhill, Charles, Samantha, Courtney, Debbie, Debbie H, Danny, Allison, Sandy and Jack, Jen, the Laurie family, Virginia, Susie H., the S. Allen family, Karen and Colleen, Walter S., Linda Pede, the Cromwell family, and the Sierra family. We give thanks to the blessings of this life, especially to those celebrating birthdays, Robin, Jack, and Caitlin. Give to the departed eternal rest. Especially we especially remember and give thanks to the life of Anita Serio, aunt of Marian Cadden. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Lord, hear the prayers of your people 
and what we have asked faithfully grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you. God have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. My sisters and brothers, the peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Let us greet one another in peace. Now, my sisters and brothers, let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, but chiefly 
are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won us for everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will perfect sacrifice for the whole world. And on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he said, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many. For the forgiveness of sins, whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. temptation to deliver us from evil. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for you.
say together the prayer for spiritual communion. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, we desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. We remember your death, Lord Christ. We proclaim your resurrection. We await your coming in glory. And since we cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let us never be separated from you. May we live in you and you in us, in this life and in the life to come. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and in his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you forever. Amen. As we go forth into the world, refreshed and renewed, we reaffirm our commitment to our mission as a congregation. Saying together, God commands us to enthusiastically cast open our doors to embrace all, impacting lives through bold service, no exception. And now, my sisters and brothers, let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks.